Here are five shocking injuries that insurance companies will actually pay for. I am really excited to do this video. I'm gonna go over in the next few minutes what these injuries are and actually how to establish these injuries if you are gonna pursue an injury claim. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I've had a lot of people come to me over the last decade of my career where they're very hesitant to bring these types of cases. Many times they didn't even know that they had a case, they were just calling because they were curious and we told them that we'd be able to help them out. So that's why I'm doing that because there are a lot of people that are injured every single day, every hour actually probably, where they've got an actual injury claim and they never bring it because they don't know that they have a right to bring it. They don't know that they're entitled to be paid back for their injuries. They don't realize that they deserve to be paid back and they go the rest of their lives without ever being compensated for that and never really getting better either. So I'm going to go over during this video what these injuries are and there are more, but I'm going to go over five of them and I'm going to tell you how you can establish those claims. The first injury that I'm going to go over is psychological injuries and I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your typical pain and suffering that you hear about in a car crash. Okay. We're not going to hear anything about car crashes except for one little thing. And that, that's near the end. But what I'm talking about here is we had a case once where, and this is just one example, but in this, in this particular situation, client was at a grocery store and an employee came out with a knife and threatened the person with a knife, threatened the client with a knife. I'd say the vast majority of situations, this would have probably caused no harm to the client, but but our client had a traumatic background and I'm not going to get into the details of that. I'm not going to get into the specifics, but what this did is this triggered something in their brain. They had previous PTSD and it caused additional PTSD. Those are the type of psychological injuries that I'm talking about. These can be very tough to prove. So what you're going to need in this situation is you're going to need evidence, right? You're going to need, and that's, that's with any injury, you're going to need proof of the injuries. And you do that by going and getting medical treatment. In this situation, our client, needed to go to a psychiatrist. By the time he'd called us, he'd actually gone to a psychiatrist and it had caused severe issues with his marriage. It's one of those things where you don't realize that these things are going to affect you the, the way that they do until they actually do. And so if you have an injury claim where it's psychological only, it's not physical, you didn't break a bone, you didn't have a concussion, things like that, just know you're not alone. There's several people out there that have injury cases where it was just psychological injuries, nothing else, right? No, there was no, nothing physical to see but those injuries are real. So those are things that insurance companies will pay for. The next one is actually one that really surprised me early on in my career, but as we've handled more and more of these cases, I've learned more and it, it's completely understandable once you've done them, but a lot of people don't realize that food poisoning is a case that insurance companies will pay for. This one is also a very tricky one to prove. It's not just prove, but then also the actual evidence of it, because unlike the situation that I just gave you with the knife, this situation is a little bit different because you have to prove that you actually ate at that restaurant and you have to prove that whatever you ate was in some way had bacteria in it and you had to have the right bacteria to prove it. And then you also, and on top of that, you have to go and get medical treatment. And the key to this one is getting the right test done. It's not just about going to the hospital and them giving you some fluids, but they need to run some tests on you. They need to do some blood tests, maybe some urine tests. They need to do all the tests. You need to let them know that you need to have some tests done to figure out what actually caused it because you could look on a timeline and see which type of bacteria that you consumed. And that is a big part of proving the food poisoning cases is figuring out the type of bacteria because then you can actually work backwards and have a timeline as to when you ate at that specific restaurant. You can look at your receipts and it all matches up. And most people don't realize that. But when food poisoning cases, all of that starts to align and it's really helpful to your case. But if you don't have all of that, you don't have a case. The third one, also a very tough one. By the way, all of these, except for one that I'm gonna talk about, is really hard to prove. Okay, so you gotta make sure that you do all of these things. You get the treatment that you need. But the next one is bed bugs. This is fairly common and this might surprise you and it might scare you a little bit. Even with the nicer hotels, people call us about bed bugs. This is one where it's not absolutely necessary, but I highly recommend that you capture one of the bed bugs. I know that that sounds terrible. It sounds awful, but these things will actually travel with you. They will follow you. That's why bed bug problems become a big problem because you can get them at the hotel and then you can take them with you to your house. And next thing you know, your family gets the bed bugs. It is a really bad thing. But testing is, is key on this one as well. You gotta have lab tests, but take a lot of photographs of the actual bites. Those bites can get really nasty sometimes. So make 
make sure that you're getting photographs of the actual bites, get receipts from going to the actual hotel, keep the actual bed bug if you can find it, get the test. This is absolutely key. And insurance companies will pay you for these claims, but you have to get the evidence to prove it. The next one that I'm gonna talk about is that one I was teasing when it comes to car crashes. This is incontinence. And this is an often overlooked one and misdiagnosed one where people are wearing their lap belt and the pressure from the crash, it smashes down on the bladder and it causes the person to have incontinence. In this situation, it's easier to prove than the other one. This is one where as long as you have a doctor that diagnoses it early, so you identify the symptoms, this is one of those things where you need to identify those symptoms. Once you've identified those symptoms, you tell the doctor and then the doctor can diagnose it because they can actually point to it and say, okay, this crash happened on this date. This is when the incontinence happened. They have bruising. So if you have bruising, make sure you take pictures. You're not always going to have bruising, but that's why it's sometimes overlooked where you don't realize that it happened, but then it starts to begin and you're trying to figure out what's going on. So if you were in a crash and you realize that you have incontinence, then you need to get checked out because it may be because of that. All right. So the last one I'm going to get to is exposure to chemicals. We had a case fairly recently, actually, where a client was in his apartment and next thing you know, he wakes up and he is on the floor and he had crawled to the door and someone had to come to his door and rescue him. And insurance companies will pay this. This was a situation where it was similar to the bed bug situation where they had come in and they had sprayed chemicals into the apartment next to his and they had not cleared out the entire hotel complex. And in that situation, they had to pay because he had serious injuries. This isn't just something where you get knocked out and you know everything goes away. Psychological injuries from this can be severe when it comes to PTSD and all that, but neurological problems can be even worse. And neurological problems can last a very long time, if not be permanent. And that's a situation where, again, evidence is key. So witness statements in this one was very, very important because we sent out an investigator right away, take statements. We got all of the chemicals that were used. We took photos photographs. Our investigator actually went and talked to the manager, got photographs of all of the chemicals that they used. We had tests done. This is one where we had to go through and get a lot of evidence. And you may have to do the same thing, but also he had to go to the doctor. He had to get diagnosed with it. So getting the evidence is one thing, but going to the doctor and documenting those injuries is another thing. So make sure you do all of those. And if you have one of these injuries, do not be afraid to pursue your claim. There's been others like you. You're not the only one. So don't think that you are and don't be afraid to bring that claim. All right. So these are five shocking injuries that insurance companies will actually pay for. If you have an injury claim, make sure you pursue it. If you're not ready to pursue a claim, that's fine. Check out our other videos and our website, all of our social media channels. Go to YouTube and if you search Mutrix for Injury Lawyers, we have a lot of explainer videos that will walk you through the process. If you do want to pursue the claim and if you're not quite ready, you just want to kind of get some information on it, go to our YouTube channel. You can get a lot of information. If you are ready to pursue your claim, give us a call. We're ready to jump into action and help you out, give us a call at 888-550-4026 and uh, we'll get started if we can help you out.